Hi, I'm Dave Barnes. And I'm John McLaughlin. And welcome to Dadville. Dadville is a podcast where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of awesome dadding. It's funny thoughts and deep talks. So please, enjoy your time here in Dadville and enjoy this episode with... Hanson again. <laughs> but you know, I don't know if Santa can speak all those languages i just know he's obviously going to show up and deliver the gifts that's yeah well and he he's been so defensive lately <laughs> i'm glad that you had this oh, ever since anyway. he bought that dot com speaking of santa yeah, yeah dave have you ever thought about growing a beard uh, real talk uh, uh this is actually me trying right now oh gosh yeah. Yeah. wow mm-hmm. okay no wonder Santa confided in you. <laughs> I was going to say. Listen, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Dave. Oof. Manscaped. Mm-hmm. Once that Billy Gibbons-esque beard finally grows Thank in, you. Dave, which I, it should be just a couple more weeks, I think, <laughs> you're going to need the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. All right? It will likely change your life. Okay, Trust I'm, me. I'm in a season of my career where I do need like a signature look, mm-hmm. and this kit would be a game changer. Yeah. I could go from Gandalf to, well, me, honestly, with these. <laughs> Potter reference. I dig it. I dig it. My kids are into it. Okay. Look, the best part about the trimmer is its versatility. Yeah. It is so versatile. Okay. That's why it has versatility. It comes with a rotary wheel that gives you 20 different hair cutting lengths. 20 different ones, Dave. Now. You could be a different person every day. Uh, All with just one guard. No more cluttered drawers uh, full of guards and, you know, changing of the guards. (laughs) Well done. And the trimmer's titanium coated T-blade is tough on hair. But gentle on your skin. That's right. That's right. Leading to single stroke efficiency, folks, and a satisfying trimming experience. Yeah, just look at how clean my nod beard looks. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. But the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, Dave, is yeah, more no. than just a trimmer. Yeah, don't, so don't, much yeah, more. Let yeah. me let me tell you. Okay. It comes with four dermatologist tested formulations for post trim care. That's the biggest word I've said today. Is this like when you say, let's fix it in post? Is that what that? That's exactly that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. The kit includes a beard, shampoo, and conditioner specially designed to moisturize, reduce ingrown hairs, and replenish your natural oils, promoting beard health. Hey, get this, John. Okay. The nutrient-infused beard oil in the mm-hmm. kit relieves dryness both on the beard and the skin beneath mm. while adding a little shimmer and shine to liven up the look. I love <laughs> shimmer and shine. Oh, God. Isn't that the name of your new album? No, but it was a wrestling duo I was in in high school. <laughs> uh, to finish things off, though, guys, the beard yep. balm in the kit shapes, styles, and moisturizes your beard with the amazing scent of fresh eucalyptus rosemary and lavender essential oils mm. that sounds like a, the perfect apothecary shopping list Ooh. You know? and if that wasn't enough dave the pro beard kit also comes with three free gifts now you've I, you're, you're saying to yourself but it's already such a big gift but manscape wants to give you more <laughs> a a beard brush mm-hmm. b a yep. comb yep c yep scissors Ooh. to ensure that your beard is always ready to impress so if you want to up your beard game or like me, just want to grow one in general. Yeah, the Beard right. Hedger Pro Kit is the way to go. Trust us. Trust you us. You won't regret it. No. Get 20% off and free shipping with our code DADVILLE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use our code DADVILLE. The Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the premier solution to face grooming. I, it just y'all, y'all have such an, an um, it, crazy story because it, again you you saying this so clearly earlier Zach like you know since six years old I mean yeah, I've never crazy. thought about that how how I mean I, I'm obviously knowing y'all have done it how much brain that, damage especially with you yeah exactly. I was gonna say <laughs> um, but you know just to think I, I'm just so curious if if that's something where you would sit with them and go like hey it was great for us I probably wouldn't advise it for other people or if you're like man go do it and have a blast, you know, uh, it, because you, you guys are uh, one of the very few people that one, not only have done it two, not only have done it as long as y'all have, but three yeah. have done it as well as long as y'all have. And so I think I mean, you guys are kind of point zero 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 one percentage of yeah. musicians. Yeah. 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 You know, the, the interesting thing to me about all that is I, I don't think I'd change anything. I don't want to tell anyone not to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we would use different dialect about it, partly because of who we are. Like, I, I don't think anyone's meant to be a musician or 
I, I don't think like if you're a musician, you just have to do it. I just have to sing yeah. because you know, God didn't make people that way. They give them free will. Like we don't yeah, like yeah. this chicken. I'm singing la 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 chicken, 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 chicken. <laughs> you know, that Listen. doesn't really. That's not a nice impression. But he did it. Listen, just talk it was about in him C, that way. actually. And the harmonies were great. If you want. <laughs> but, um, chicken, chicken, chicken. Oh, that's so yeah, there we go. I, I, I sort of think that um, there's this kind of effort and struggle um, formula somewhere in the world. And so in our case, we went through a lot of effort and struggle as young people. Hmm. And that mm -hmm. gave us a, a lot of really amazing wow. results. But, mm -hmm. but, but it meant that we did it all. Like we, we did what people do in 20 years in five. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 And, and so as a, as a normal world thing, Zach, in don't society, brag, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, just let's get some stats guys. Just so y'all know what we did real yeah. quick. Um, like, there's so me Dave, and then you there's could do other one, people. I can do 10. No, no. Um, but, I but can't I, help it. Sorry. <laughs> what it means, there's me and then there's other. <laughs> I don't, uh, well, I, I can't keep going, but, good but what I, what I mean by that is simply you have to go through that process. You're yeah. going to do that much work. You're going to do that much struggling. You're going to deal with that many challenges. Hmm. And, and you as a person just have to decide what, what you want. Yeah. Do you want a life that's that hard, right? Mm -hmm. So like all the positive results of being successful and financially stable. And like hmm. I got married at 20 and I didn't have to worry about money or a job right. or right. my future. Right. right? Cause and you already had a job I and you'd save job, money. Right? Yeah. I'd already That's saved right. money right. from it. But also there's all kinds of things you miss and all kinds hmm. of maturity and other processes you don't go through. And wow. you well, you still kind of have to pay the piper eventually though. You don't get to walk back from being that guy in that band, right? You'll always be yeah, this element of your life has been shared in a way other people's have it. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, at weird places, you'll be at Golden Corral just eating. I was, <laughs> I was at a date with my wife the other night, and I was sitting there, and the waitress just walked up, and she was looking really strangely at my wife, and she just goes, "I have to ask, what is it like to know that all women our age were in love with your husband?" Wow. Right. In this awkward way, and it was just like. You're like, I'm oh, sorry, real quick. It. Did you say were or are? It's, I know it's semantics <laughs> at this point, but just for me. That's where you're like, like just for me. <laughs> that's where you're like, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, uh, this, you just run. Before he got fat. Day. It was so nice. <laughs> that's what she said next. <laughs> Personally, my favorite years. Any, Pause. The zenith was really then about five got... years ago. It was, guys, hair was great. You <laughs> could tell He's he was like, running. <laughs> She's like, it makes me feel good about me because I stick with him. Oh my God. <laughs> She's like, waitress, well, you would have been there for the good years. I've been there for yeah. all the years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is true that I'm just. Because I, I just want to say, Snarkans you're welcome. Here. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for. I just served that up yeah. to you. No, it's it's, it's a, it is a very bizarre relationship to have with your to, for sure with coming of age in having broken out young in that kind of dynamic especially i will just jump back to the question of the kids because your kids if they're old enough at some point they do get to they they do know your story as they get old enough to yeah. catch up on it like, yeah oh, that's crazy you were how old were you wait yeah. you mean you were my age when X wow happened. wow and and they start going oh my god what's going on am i supposed to do that and that's wow that's a scary thing yeah. and i i've faced that with with boys and girls with kind of them going am i supposed to compare or contrast and the truth is wow. it's like um, the one th the, Zach was responding directly to a statement I have made many times, which is I feel like if you have to do it, you then you should do it. And and I think to me that's really saying, I think with my kids I've set I've kind of had this experience too is like look, obviously everything's a choice, you know, and you're but you're gonna have to work at something, you know, right? You're gonna you're gonna start a business, you're gonna work for a business, you're gonna raise your family, you're gonna mm. you know do whatever your 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 main vocation is in your life and yeah. and whatever you put effort towards. So if mm. if you've got there's certain things that, man, you've you have won the jackpot if you can spend as much of those hours doing things that you really feel yeah. called to, you know, that are that give you energy, that give you life, that make you and so music is one of those things, like he said, John, there's so few people that get to make it their job, right? That get mm -hmm. to pay the bills, that get to make wake up and say, I'm gonna write songs, I'm gonna tour, mm -hmm. I'm gonna write. And so mm -hmm. it is one of those things that you you do have to have to me some degree of 
you know, sort of uh, insanity or, or sort of, you know, a masochism, like to, you know, you're going to experience pain, you're going to experience struggle to try and keep this job. But the truth is that's true of most things you know yeah, if you want to right. succeed at most mm -hmm. vocations you're gonna to have to work yeah so music is deeply personal though which is the really unique challenge yeah yeah, yeah. So, could, because because the unique challenge about that is a, a lot of times a, a lot of times for folks you know a, a job it, it may be something that you're good at or it may be something that you know that you have passion for but a lot of times it's not um like a direct reflection on your personality in some sense, yeah, right? Yeah, your identity mm -hmm. isn't uh, in, like in the wrapped same... up in it as much. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's like, I mean, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, somebody who is an accountant isn't in some way or another a certain kind of person. Right. They are probably, but, mm -hmm. but, but, but that is not necessarily their hobbies or, or, or a reflection in the same way on like how they are as parents, et cetera. Whereas in a certain sense, as a musician, you're kind of bearing your soul a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. And so there's a lot of that back and forth. And so the challenge, I think, is if someone wants to take on that kind of job, right, they have to be both vulnerable enough to share it, but also confident, confident enough yeah. to not lose themselves in the sharing. Yeah. To it not lose like themselves in right the oh please, say that, which, <laughs> <laughs> not, not lose yourself in the oh please, oh please love me, right? Right. right? Yeah. And I think that 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 actually, I'm just now thinking about this. I think that is the greatest gift that our parents ever gave us. Hmm. Was while wow. they might have, while they might have encouraged us, while they might have uh, even in some sense, you know, pushed us at times. There was never the sense, or at least I never got the sense that it was a about um, chasing fame hmm. or about being accepted. It was always like mom and dad are going to love you and care about you no matter whether you're a musician or not. Oh, they yeah. told you they loved you? Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. I, know, I, know. I was the only one. I was the only oh one that got told gosh. I was loved. You've seen um, mom and but, dad? <laughs> but so I, so I think... <laughs> they call you? <laughs> so, so I think that, I, I think that as, as best as you can, <laughs> I think as best as we can... You know, I, or as best as I can, I, I want my boys, I want my daughter, um, you know, to to have a sense of themselves that is outside of anything else uh, that they do, that they're, that, you know, they've got a place and yeah. that they and that they have self-confidence that you have hopefully yeah. given them through the push and pull of, of life. But but and, and if you feel like they're confident enough to take that on, you know, then. Hey man, go for it. It's going to be brutal probably. And yeah. you're, and you're probably going to, you're probably going to walk away going, man, I don't, you know, you, there's a lot of times when you feel pretty inadequate at, at the job, but, yeah. but you know, if you, if you're stubborn enough and luckily Taylor and Zach are more stubborn than me. So I've kind of piggybacked on their stubbornness. Um, <laughs> You know. I wanted. To, I was just jumping off of something. I know we've, you know, we've been chatting for a while, so you guys <laughs> probably stop adding anecdotes. But you know, well, um, we'll start recording here in yeah, just a minute. Yeah. It feels good so far. <laughs> oh, though. perfect. Okay. But on. you know, um, so trying to get, we spent our whole life, you know, touring and being musicians, and you know, getting sort of physically healthy was always kind of ah, oh, that's not, that you do. You just don't have good habits. And then, particularly, I feel like in my thirties, I finally was like, okay, getting back on and trying to do stuff, trying to exercise, trying to. You mean because musician know. is not sports? Yeah. No, it's. Yes. it's bad. It's terrible, terrible, terrible. It's the opposite of sports. Stay up and late, I, I don't love, get enough sleep, probably stand there. drink too much alcohol or eat exactly. a pizza late at night. And I've now, I see, you know, my kids, you know, getting older and like wanting them to pick up good habits too. And I have, there's yeah. a point to this story. Um, there's something that, that I really love that I've come across this, a phrase that with, with um, doing, with exercising, particularly with lifting weights, which is this idea of, you know, getting to a fail, you know, getting to a fail. And there's a mm -hmm. phrase that gets used like when you're lifting and saying, hey, that was a really good fail. And I, and I was thinking about that. I love that because mm. this whole idea of, you know, we're, we're so afraid to fail, right? We're mm, living yeah. like, and I think a lot of the musician thing that people are afraid of is, you know, if you don't decide not to be a doctor, decide not to be a dentist, decide not to be a whatever, most of the time, you, it's not like you do that on stage. You kind of do it with your family and your friends and you decide. But with, if you decide to be a musician or performer, you kind of like, you put yourself out there at a different level and you sort of you fail in front of a, maybe a broader audience. But embracing failure as an actual essential part of development, I think, yeah. is this magical gate opener. And even sitting there, you're lifting weights and you're like, literally, I want to go until I can't lift. And then, okay, next tomorrow or day after, I'm going to come back and feel, I'll get a little I stronger. feel really sore. And right. so just yeah. this idea of, <laughs> of, of going, wow, I, I got, you know, kind of having in your whole vernacular, you know, I'm going to fail. 
and that's a good thing because it's not you're not dead you didn't die you you, you hit a wall and sort of learning that there's you know there's stuff that's that's yeah that can kill you and you shouldn't chase after that terrible thing but having the sense that that if you screw up if you fail if you you know if you don't get there that's not the end that's right. part of the journey you know and that would be kind of all the way back to the question about musicians and kids and all that stuff is is just realizing that whatever path anybody chooses they're going to have to fail Absolutely. Yeah. you know they're going to have to try they're going to have to figure it out and mostly though we've had tons and tons of challenges like every life has had we've we've had a pretty extraordinary life my experience mm. has been pretty extraordinary i've met amazing people have amazing you know people that have inspired me and a whole bunch of stuff that I hope my kids will never have to go through, yeah. but they're going to have to go through something. Right. Oh man. Right? I, hope, I mean, they're going to have yeah. some version of like, that was horrible and mm. that hurt. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, um, well, you know, he's I, making me feel so much better about my solo show at Back to the Island. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, it's my failing. Good fail, I think. Uh, good, good fail. Thank you. Fail. I pushed good to fail. the good fail. Oh god! You know, and I, then, I, I uh, you know what they call a failed musician? <laughs> what? Uh, they don't call him. That's the whole oh, thing. My oh my god! god. Do, 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 do. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, life can be really, really tough sometimes. I think we all have moments where we can feel overwhelmed or like we're not showing up in the way that we want to. Yeah, absolutely. And that's normal. But you know what can help with that, mm -hmm. working with a therapist. And BetterHelp is the easiest way to get started. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Yeah. Therapy can be a really great tool for getting to the root of our issues and figuring out how to better handle them. It's not just about talking through problems. It's about empowering yourself to be your best. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I think sometimes we need someone just to help us see things in a different light. Yeah. I know just sitting in the room with someone who knows how to help me process is so unbelievably helpful. Not to mm -hmm. mention just to hear myself say things out loud and that they can take those things and go, hey, have you thought about this? Or I just heard you say. These yeah. things are transformative. They're yeah. Helpful, yeah. And when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can do great things when you're at your best. Yeah, it's a brave step towards taking care of yourself and becoming the best version of yourself. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DadBill today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash DadBill. Well, and so finally, I said it's not a knock knock joke if there's no one's knocking. <laughs> oh my gosh. And everyone else was asleep. <laughs> Dead asleep. That's incredible. Like, that's yeah. That's a shame that no one heard that. Yeah. yeah. So, question Have you heard yeah. about the candy disguised as children's vitamin out there? Oh, yeah. It's a real treat. Not. <laughs> gosh. I you love never not jokes. fail to yeah. impress. <laughs> not not jokes. Yeah. You never fail to impress with the dad jokes, Sean. I, I want to just affirm that in you. Let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Haya Health, mm -hmm. the pediatrician-approved chewable vitamin. Finally, Dave, yeah. mm -hmm. a vitamin that's actually good for your kids and not just their sweet tooth. My you know kids I mean? loved decorating bottle. It comes with this oh, cute yeah. stickers, so they're engaged on that level. Plus, Haya is made with zero sugar and zero gummy, gummy junk. junk. Yeah. I don't like gummy junk. No. I don't want it. No. Yeah, gummy but, junk was, was the name of my high school band. I was going to say, I love Dale's first We record. only played instruments. That we made from recycled furniture and appliances. <laughs> and you, that's specific, it, it, it's very specific one, and two, you could tell. You could definitely Good. tell. Good. I, yeah. I take offense to that, and also it's a compliment. <laughs> Guess what, Dave? <laughs> Speaking of Haya Health, Haya is like a superhero, Dave. It's, yeah. it's filling in all the gaps in our kids' diets, right? Yeah. And I never have to remember to order it since it shows up every month. Oh, easy yeah. oh, peasy God. lemon squeezy. And it's not just any ordinary vitamin. No, 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 no. Haya is packed with 12 organic fruits and veggies and supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals. It's also non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, wow. gelatin-free, wow. nut-free, oh, and man. everything else you can imagine. Yeah, say goodbye to candy disguised as vitamins and say hello to Haya. The pediatrician approved superpower chewable vitamin. Our kids deserve the best and Haya delivers. Let's give them the full body nourishment they need. All right, here, here's the exciting part. Okay. And you, you're thinking, we've already covered so many exciting things, but this is where <laughs> it gets really here exciting we because we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best selling children's vitamin. Mm -hmm. You can receive 50% off, five zero people, 50% off your first order. And to claim this deal, 
Just go to HayaHealth.com slash Dadville. This deal is not available on their regular website. That's because we got the deal with them, guys. Right. Because we love you and Haya loves you. Go to Haya Health. That's H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash Dadville and get 50% off your first order. One, one, one more thing I wanted to ask. Uh, we have a couple questions of it at the end, but... One thing I want to say it as an aside, which is so I've never thought about this, and it's really like I, I've wondered because my kids are too young now. But you know, Taylor, your point earlier about your your kids kind of having to reconcile this weird thing of like, okay, I know what yeah, y'all do, it's me, you know, and y'all have had so much success at it, um, and I've seen that. You know, we're at the restaurant and somebody wants to get a picture of my dad, or I go to the shows and I see all the people and everybody's singing along. Um, You know, I've I've never stopped long enough to think about with my three as they kind of come into their own here in the next five, six years. um, They're 30, 32, respectively. But, you know, just just that (laughs) they're still young enough that I could especially see with with a couple of their personalities that that may be something they have to do. I I just know how, you know, that there may be a moment when I'm like, okay, um, I guess I got to try this or is this what, and, and that's, it's amazing to hear you right. uh, say that. That's I, I love now that I feel like that's a little more on my radar and oh, I can sure. really dig that in and show how successful I've been. And if they fail, especially how much better <laughs> I am <laughs> and an authority I am in their life. Right. But, but so thanks right. for saying that, Cause I think that's incredibly profound. One of the things that I wanted to ask before we go, cause y- y- y'all have done such a good job of, of walking through the, the time you've done it, what you've learned, how long you've done it. Yeah. Um, when you think, and I think something that is so, again, unique about you guys is that you're still doing it at such a high level. And in my opinion, it's not something where, where you see so many young bands start with music that they're just like, oh God, you know, this is, and I mean, we all, everybody has songs you've recorded, no matter how old you were, that you look back retrospectively and kind of go like, I mean, you know, whatever but you and i really mean this i think you guys are so different because that music was good at the beginning it really was like if it, it could have been terrible you know what i mean it, like if you think about y'all's ages the norm there would have been awful yeah. and then hey, eventually our, not good yeah. our biggest hit has the line when you get old and start losing your hair so i mean you know there, Which, there listen, are some moments uh, paul mccartney has probably written a hundred of those lines and songs on beatles <laughs> records you know but but i think right. all that to say I do think that is unique about you guys is that 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 music really is good. Like from album one, they were they were gr- good song. You're not like you know you're not sitting there. But what is y'all's relationship with, especially Umbop, the early songs that did so well? Is that something where you kind of have to be in the right headspace, or you really do love it, or it depends on the night, or because I I mean you know it comes on the radio and I still love that song. I mean it's just a great, unbelievably catchy song. It's an interesting question right now because we we've got we're actually at this very moment re-recording a version of Umbop in the key we sing it in live because um, we you know it's, you get different requests over time and yeah. any musician knows licensing of songs is one of the things that kind of becomes a part yeah. of your world yeah, yeah. you know a commercial or whatever yeah. and of course we haven't sung it since the very first tour. We haven't sung it in the key that it was recorded in. Like Jeez. we were, how, how far off y'all now? We're singing it in F, like or F sharp. five semitones, like G e versus A. Yeah. But that, it sounds talk very about the like, fun you, things about recording things as, as yeah. infants. But we we just yeah. re-recorded the it was, song. It was originally it was originally an A. We currently play it in E. We did an F for a minute. Yeah, but we did an F. Yeah, but That's it's um, you know the song. You know we reimagined it for our symphony project mm-hmm. where we wow. did acoustic mm-hmm. with a symphony behind us, which was really beautiful. Uh, and, that was called String Theory, which and, is that record. Yeah, d- definitely check that record. I was that was a really uh, a high note to make that project happen. But um, I think you know Umbab is really a campfire song. You know, and me, what I say is when I say that I mean it's kind of a. It's it's a very much a, a sentimental song, and it's mm. funny that the song is very is this rhythm boom boom. It's very upbeat. Yeah. But anybody that became a Hanson fan, I think, became I think this is my uh, a real fan because they listened to the lyrics and then they listened to what it was about and then they got to know the fact that so much of our music is this seeking of something bigger and then putting some you know joy to a soundtrack joy. of joy and yeah, yeah. it's mm. not like everything's great and shiny it's hey here's a problem but we're going to do x mm-hmm. and i think that's what umbop really that's what umbop has always been mm-hmm. and it's about journeys it's about a story it's about holding on to what matters and in in a way um 
of course you want you want different songs you know to be heard you want albums mm-hmm. to be heard you want different hits everybody craves that and we've had a lot of songs that fans love that one stands above everything because it was so just a an un, yeah so it was successful such yeah. a unique unique moment you could never hope to well, say it's hey, still in know. the culture what blows yeah. which blows my mind like you know i'll yeah. hear it in a movie or a commercial of the last two or three years it's crazy right. yeah and know? it's i think people want to you know they want to feel uh they want to feel those feelings they want to feel yeah. connection yeah. to their own history right. they yeah right feel and so um, i would say for me very very proud of that song of all the songs, I'm glad it was that one in a sense because it really does still, even though it's it's not understood by by most people, it really is like it's one that I'm proud to sing and say, and and actually like all music, um, that's I think hopefully decently written at least to some level, it it continues to evolve. Yeah. It doesn't. It's not the exact. When you sing it 25 years after it was recorded, and you Jeez. look out at a crowd, some of which were there when it was recorded, some mm. of which are are half the age of the song yeah. it's like it, it never stays still right it's just it's yeah, moving yeah. and yeah. and i think that's this crazy weird gift of songs is like you put them out into the world and then they just they take on their own life they, have, they, have they you go always, on without you you know have you always had that outlook on it or did you have to go through those couple I mean, years we where fought you re- it resented it a we little fought bit. so when you yeah i think well, um it probably all goes back to really early years of being a band and when you mm. talk about the struggles, right? Uh, one of the things you you have to do when you are doing something that is completely different than everything around you, right? Every friend you have wow. is in school, yeah, and right. you're going to play a gig, yeah. right? Every person you know is playing baseball and soccer over the summer, and you're going to California to make an album mm-hmm. with people you don't know, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And you're going to write, walk into a room with a stranger and write a song. Like, I think what it really teaches you to do, hopefully, is to see yourself outside of your situation. And so when you play a song on stage, you're able to see you and you're able to see that person having an experience with what you're doing. Mm. They're not the same thing. Their experience isn't based on everything you did today. It's based on everything they did. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Here's where I was when I heard your song for the first time. I feel connected to you. You go, that's amazing. I wasn't there. Yeah. And I, <laughs> you know, and so, so I think that helps you. And, and mm. we've always been able to, I think, it mostly make that distinction between how people mm. respond to what you do and why you did what you do. Yeah. And, and that's been really healthy. I think the only thing that you, that you feel a concern about or a resistance towards is that, is that some people will think that that is the only side yeah. of you. That yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, what and, they know. Right. Exactly. What yeah, they, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and so, and, and so while, so what I would say is every time we played on Bob, when we were doing that string theory tour, I got choked up every wow, single geez. night. That's because when you sing, when you get old and start losing your hair, can you tell me who still cares? So sorry, so hold on to the ones that really care, especially that lyric. And in the end, they'll be the only ones there. Is in the end, they'll be the only ones there. And here I am looking out oh. at a full house wow. and a symphony behind us, and I'm going, "Wait a second, mm. here we are, you know, at Sydney Opera House singing this thing." It's just like it's it's the craziest, coolest. And also, there's a lot. There's a lot of. There's a lot of bruises in there too. Right. Mm. There's a lot of times when you got beat up real hard because mm. you had to leave the label and you had to do the things and you had to do all the hard work that yeah. that that in some sense you you kind of had like the afterburners on when you were a kid and then you had to then you had to slug it out you know and really go through that long war the long battle yeah. Yeah. to yeah. keep that to keep the career alive even when. You had people that said, oh, no, you know, it's not going to work anymore. And he said, no, yeah. it is going to work because I'm only 21 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and yep. it's not done. And and you keep fighting and you keep fighting and you keep fighting. And luckily, we've had fans along the way who have who have stuck with us in, in major, major ways over and over and over again. And and also, similarly, when you're talking about songs, the song Ombop and the song Weird have mm. so much similarity so from the first Sub- record, from yeah. subject mm-hmm. matter that if you listen to both of those songs i think you hear the same people wow. and i think you understand more clearly who we were kind of the melancholy version and the upbeat version because mm-hmm. they both address the same kind of issue hmm. which is not which is having to kind of 
be okay with who you are in the world uh, and, 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 and kind of making choices and, and trying to kind of balance that. How do I deal with whether I'm misunderstood or whether I am, you know, understood and who, well, who I am. The world. So it's, it's know, making me think of, you know, bringing, bringing kind of it back to the subject of parenthood and, and music and the whole mm-hmm. things, you know, uh, you guys are, this shows, uh, talking about being a dad, not just being a father. A father is like mm. technicality, right? A mm. dad is a choice to be engaged. Mm. And and I think so much of what we're doing, I mean, a huge part of most of our story really has been our, after the break, then having a second record, biggest music merger in history, and then deciding what neck the next act was. Mm. And, you know, if you talk about in starting a record company, launching that first single we put out was called Penny and Me and back in 2000. Oh my God, that song rebuild- is so good. We rebuilt everything. God, we, we, we've been independent again since after being originally independent, much longer than we were ever signed to a major. And we've had to slug it out, you know, like mm-hmm. musicians should and do. And thankfully, we, you know, we're selling more tickets today than we did 20 years ago. And, but I think, you know, being a dad and being a, you know, sort of the, the role of like that we're talking about in like the relational thing, there's something to take away from like, to me, these last 20 plus years, which is that sort of almost like calling somebody to help you with stock investments and be like, look, here's the deal. It's going to look like the, it's, it's like, everything's her- yeah. horrible right now. But if you pan the camera yeah. back far enough, yeah. it's slowly yeah. going up, you know, it's, I promise, <laughs> just hold on. Yeah. That's what they're telling me about yeah. Bitcoin. It's like Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> just, just hold on. Just hold on. It's it's like a Wilson Phillips song, you know. Here we go, and well, my, my wife and daughter love that song. And that's and I so I think that's like the, t- the the takeaway with this. You know, we've been as independent bands. We've been entrepreneurs. We started a beer company, started a festival. We've been you know been our own label. We've um, we've had a small team. We've you know we've got to tour the world for years and years. But you every time you go up to bat, you're slugging it out. And I think the the role like I'm grateful for those two experiences of kind of being a dad and being an entrepreneur, being a musician, because. They do give you lessons that toss back to one another, mm. one of which is just sort of keep waking up and keep moving to the next day and the next day and the next day because, you know, every day you do, that's like you're, you're still swinging. Yeah. You're still, yeah. you know, you don't have to, you don't have to get all the way there, you know. Yeah. And I definitely think that the experience we've been as musicians for me, I mind those experiences when I'm looking at, well, I do not know how to help a 16-year-old figure out wow. how to become 16 wow. and a half. Right. I'm like, okay, well, I know... I, I'm freaked out that the world's coming to an end over here, mm. you know, and okay, now let me try and remember, okay, what was that like? And so there's you're sort of trying to see the long picture, I think is really, you yeah. know, I guess what the, the simple version of it is there's, there's definitely lessons that, the, the, that go both directions, yeah. you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and we've absolutely been slugging it out, you know, yeah. just kind of going for the long game. So that's what's so confusing. The ad didn't say swimming with sharks. It said swimming in shorts. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's not near as scary for me, that, at least. That's such a weird prom theme, though. Well, it, well, once you – the Titanic and it, oh, the Celine right. Dion song was yeah. huge at the time. Yeah. So, you know, I've been inspired by our signature methodical coffee oh, lately. Yeah. Uh, I've started to develop an entire coffee-themed stand-up set. Oh, let's hear it. Okay, here we go. Okay. Why did the coffee file a police report? Okay. Uh – be- it, I don't know. It what? got mugged. <laughs> oh, come okay. on. Why did Give the coffee more. order a round of shots? Uh, why? It wanted to espresso itself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've got, wow. Call me butter because okay. I'm on a roll. I got one more. Why did the coffee go to therapy? Why? It had a lot of beans to spill. Are you kidding me, John? Man. Man. And uh, I, I look, Bargazzi wishes he had these jokes. They're so funny that that's why I'm not laughing. Oh. Um. Mm. That's a great start, though. Listen, okay, okay. before mm-hmm. you start a brouhaha, <laughs> come on, <laughs> you've got him too. I just want to get in there. Yeah, no, Let's right. tell our listeners why we love methodical coffee. <laughs> I spend literally hours working on my set, and a single Johnny Mac pun tops them all. I mean, it's uh, just it's it's a gift you've got. Look, it's yeah, a gift yeah. and a burden. Well, it's well, a burden I didn't ask for it. I know. I just gonna, I got <laughs> anyway, methodical's been roasting and hosting. Look at that. See what I did there? Nice. For over eight years and offers a wide selection of coffees and teas that are complex yet easygoing. Just like you, Johnny. Ah. Mm-hmm. And our signature Dadville blend covers the three main pillars of world class coffee. I'm going to say I'm with you. Chocolate. Chocolate. Yep. Second one's Graham. Yep. And the last one? Brown sugar. seasoning. <laughs> Sorry. 
Sorry. Yeah, no, uh, I, brown sugar. I got hungry in the middle, and then my brain sort of went there. Okay. I might want to fact check just the ta- – again, taco feels right, but I think you're right. It is It is the brown yeah, sugar. Yeah, yeah, but I love, sugar. love, love methodical coffee because they have so many types of coffees to choose from. Mm-hmm. They have classic blends, yep. complex modern blends, so and even avant-garde blends that are really funky. Your accent is so good, especially when you've been drinking a lot of methodical. (laughs) Well, listen, here's your chance to score some amazing coffee at an incredible price. You won't believe it. Just head to methodicalcoffee.com for more information and use the discount code DADVILLE for 10% off your first order. That's methodicalcoffee.com and use the code DADVILLE to get 10% off your first order. Get your coffee on. I have a geeky quick songwriter question when y'all wrote um bop did you and even penny me honestly did, did you was it somewhere y'all came because i mean you're so young do you come in the kitchen and go like mom check this out and she's like gold mine you know was it or did y'all feel that or was it because it's such a her voice was her voice was a little lower than that you, yeah. yeah bringing it back bringing it but, back I mean, did, was it, was it pretty quick y'all knew that. it was it was sneakier than that no it was uh-huh. it we we were told this story now a little bit more vividly because uh, it's been long enough. But yeah. that you know, we were writing, we were recording a song called "Boomerang" on our first, you know, real proper indie record that we were recording with a producer or anybody else, not in a garage, just singing on a mic. And we we were looking for a background part to complement. And we'd grown up listening to doo wop and rock and roll and gospel music, and so singing oohs and ahs and was kind of a part of singing because we started singing part of the vernacular. Yeah. yeah, and so we were working on another part to sing behind it and basically this little scatty like that started and what happened is it it just kind of took over like it was it was not a background part it was its own and so we kind of this little idea was suddenly like a, a little acorn that was a nugget and went over here to the left or right whichever i'm pointing um, and and Which it waited it? it was like this little idea that like literally i remember walking into the you know brushing the teeth you know months after that be yep. like just kind of having this little and it was almost it was now sitting on a shelf and then uh, uh, almost two years in uh started kind of i started playing with you know a little verse melody mm-hmm. and realized that the two found each other and then that the song became a song, you know. We, we I, I mean, I have that vivid memory of you I, walking into the living room. So our band yeah. set up at we that, took over the middle of the house, yeah, not the garage. The, <laughs> we took over the living room. Uh, that's as an example of how supportive our parents yeah. were of it. Yeah. Uh, but but we um, Taylor's sitting there with the you know piano and everything, and he uh, and he and he said, "Hey man, I, I think I think I got this idea that I think would work. Remember that chorus? He's like, check this out." And he started playing. Yeah, so many, many relationships, relationships in this life. life. Only one and or two will last. Yeah. And I'm just like, "Oh yeah, no, I think that could work." And 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 so you, you know, just got into pawn shop electric guitar, which is yeah. like a fake Les Paul. And <laughs> yeah. basically, you're like, "I can arpeggio." It's an L E S S Paul. It's a Les Paul. Yes, it costs less. Yeah, it's less. Less Paul, lesser Paul. Yeah. Lesser Paul. You know. lesser Paul. <laughs> uh, just a Paul. Um, <laughs> it was appalling. <laughs> but it, it, yeah, it was that organic, and 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 it became all of a sudden it was a merging of these two worlds, and it became this song. And you know. That was it was always received well when he did it locally, but it wasn't the favorite song before. Really, you know, mm-hmm. it was that's yeah. interesting. It was one of the it was a mainstay, but but any, anyway, I mean, there's we so many. We also didn't songs. get a chance to play it quite as much because we because that record that demo, which you, you you know people were our manager was kind of shopping that record around before it was completed and released, um, and uh, that record was what got us signed. And, and he had been song, shopping the demo yeah. of that song. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. had been shopping that for probably about three or four months. Mm-hmm. But, but, yeah. So, so by the time it actually got released locally, you know, we were kind of already on the trajectory to kind of go out to California and stuff. But, but I mean, I, yeah, I mean th- that, that song, that song, obviously, I mean, it, it was catchy. It got stuck in our head. Hmm. Don't let anybody tell you they thought it was a hit. They just knew it was Catchy. Stuck in your head. Oh, that's so it's like baby shark. That's so right? You know, <laughs> that doesn't. <laughs> baby shark. Da, 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 da. Hey, that shark, song's da, a hit. Da, da, hey. Da, da, da. Hey, yeah. Baby shark is a, it's massive, a massive hit. hit. It's not. No, no, no. We don't want it to be, but it no, is. No, it's, it's a. Look, look. We don't want look, it to be, but look, it is. Hits, it's true. hits are things that people are proud of. <laughs> Successes <laughs> are things that make Oh, my gosh. This is true. Teenage boy zone. Hey, I've got one. I've got one <laughs> random question before we get to our our last like wrap up questions. Uh, I thought about this earlier, but Zach, when you were talking about how just how 
young you were. I mean, this question applies to all of you, but especially you. It's kind of a two part, which one, do you feel kind of like, like when you watch like movies like The Sandlot or something like that, do you, do you watch <laughs> that and you're like, no, that, well, I can't connect to this. That was not my childhood. My summers were on tour. I was in Europe, you know, that summer, whatever. And if so, <laughs> is there anything that you cricket. do yes. or have done like in your adult years that you're like, oh, I think this is my subconscious way of like getting that back. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I feel I feel like that I, I gaming channel. I am yeah. the most <laughs> childlike person that you have ever met. Uh -huh. Like I still buy toys and I like I, I stream and play my video games all the time. And so I, I just never you grew out of it. Forced, I never grew you out of forced it. Forced the childhood um, onto your adult. Yeah, childhood. I think so. I'm sort of a robot, mm -hmm. and so I think. I think you get one of the other, you know, you, you don't get both things. You get to be a child as long as you can be and then miss out on all the opportunity of the time you wasted or you get to become an adult in certain ways early and hmm. miss out on some of the childhood things. But it's not none of those things are you owed. That's the beauty. Yeah, of wow. it, Right. You're not owed a good life. You make a good life. Wow. Right. Jeez. And that's the thing I think. Most I don't people think you've miss. talked to our generation. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I don't have to talk to them because I'm that's kidding. like, I'm saying that's like a... gravity. It's a, it's a law of nature mm. by, by thinking you're owed it, you get a bad life. Yeah. Right. That's, that's oh, yeah. what happens. Yeah, that's and, and because that's... you're not in control of it. See, that's why. Well, no. if you think you're owed a good life, you go, Oh, somebody, somebody's not giving me something. You're like, no, no, no. It's you. That's not giving yourself right. Look at the this. respect, it's... the discipline, the, the, the I kind of confidence to do it in some sense. Life isn't a roller coaster. It's a car on a highway. It's... If you don't hold the steering wheel, you crash, right? <laughs> this is or you may have a good mile or, or two in there if it's Arizona. Somebody, <laughs> right, right. Or, or, but somebody behind you crashes into you because you're not driving. Right. And, and that's sort yeah. of, I guess that's the way I look at it. I think that's it. great. I mean, yeah, we absolutely miss out well, on some things. Well, and obviously, you know, like totally miss some what things. we all do for a living is it sort of perpetuates, you know, your younger years a little bit. It enables yeah, you absolutely. to do that. Absolutely. But you guys started so big at such young ages yeah. that I would imagine, I agree with everything you're saying, but that you still can allow yourself to feel, if, if you do feel it, that you missed out on something. You know what I mean? Oh, you know. We, well, like I, you said you definitely miss out on. Yeah, I mean, it comes you at trade. a cost. You make you make a trade. Yeah, yeah. You trade things. Uh, yeah, what what I, I I what I feel like I missed out on is sort of a different thing, which is actually the the coming of age things. Yep. It's it's not the youth. Yeah. Most people are. Oh, I've lost my youth. Well, what you said is true. I think performers, musicians, creators they are able to capture youth and retain youth in a way that is not normal because mm. that excitement, that optimism that comes with songwriting mm -hmm. in some sense and performing, I mean, not all people are optimistic in their songwriting, but <laughs> uh, there's a certain elasticity yeah. in being creative, which is something that is stereotypically youthful. Right. Mm. Yeah. But the, the hardest part is um, coming of age is really about learning to fail. Right. And and when you fail in public, you, you have to do it with poise, mm -hmm. right? You have to do it. I screwed up, but I'm OK. <laughs> you know, you, it's sort of like a, a professional football player. Hey, you lost the game tonight. Why do you think you yeah, lost right. uh, tell me about all the things you messed up? Right? That is like a man's way of losing. And that's what you do when you're a musician and you screw up on stage. You drop a stick during the Grammy performance. You do, right? Everybody goes, oh, how'd that happen? Right? But kids get to fail in a way that is just bombastic and, wow. and disgusting, you know, and kind of a pile on the floor. The, the kid at Disney World who, you know, is, I just right. want an ice cream cup. Right. <laughs> Meltdown. Right. You don't get to melt down right. um, mm -hmm. when you're in public. And the truth is the people who aren't mature enough who do melt down in public at that level become known for it, right? Yeah. It, it haunts them their whole life because they never learned how to do it well. And so that's kind of what I, I would say you, you that's lose. That's the hardest, yeah. Some of those things. And you still are kind of doing those things into your 30s and 40s mm -hmm. in a way that's 
not what other people do because well, you're still I, figuring out some of those transitions mm-hmm. you didn't get to go through. Right. I think our our challenge is also unique in this particular area as well. The question was for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. And sometimes you see a little bit of a seven year old come back out. He's a comedian. See, this is this is the solution. Um, but um, no, but I also think, but I also think that there's a a a, a, a challenge for us. Uh, which we we've talked about a lot in the last I think feel like in the last five or six years, which is like there's this weird thing where because we've been doing this job our whole lives, and because we've been doing it together, there is this really tricky balance of figuring out who Isaac Hansen is, yeah, versus who the band is, yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. the business. And all this kind Absolutely, of stuff. So yeah. there's this very unique dynamic and challenge. And that's what you're talking about. The coming of age element of like, hey, man, I went to college and I was by myself. <laughs> no, mm. Let's tie it back in. You know, we talked about how, like, you got to separate from your dad. I think Isaac's saying the band is his dad. Mm. You're oh, not my that's, dad. This is you push <laughs> well, no, but it is. A, there is some elements of that. Yeah, too. yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then taller. also, Zach, and then also, Zach, you know, our dad does work. Our dad actually works for us, which is bizarre. Um, cause he, you know, is a certified public accountant. Mm. And, uh, so he, you know, he takes care of the, of the taxes yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's an interesting challenge in and of itself too. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. You, said you guys had, I was going to add in a relation. You get, there's another, there's I'm, a rap, I'm not going to say anything He's going to wrap. He's going to wrap. No, 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 go. no, no, like no, no, beautiful no, no. We want all the wisdom you have yeah. to give. The people yeah. are craving it. Come on. <laughs> what do you got? Come on. You got anything yeah. left? Fried chicken recipes. Oh my God. Um, no. <laughs> Well, just coming of uh, coming of age, I think I think it's true. We 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 experience things differently. I think just the whole idea of what did you lose, what did you mm-hmm. miss out on, um, it's just it's kind of a flawed sort of paradigm. Which is that, yeah, I mean, you everything's a trade, right? I mean, you trade one like you, the kid that you know went through quote unquote you know a, a childhood that was normal, which I don't really know what normal is yeah. truly because yeah. nobody's got the same exact story. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just trade it, and and I think that's you know that is part of we've traded certain things for other things, and nobody is an unbroken person. You know, yeah. we all have cracks. You know, and, amen. You know, we've all got cracks. So, <laughs> and some of us actually have crack. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, do crack, 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 crack. No. Give it a crack. No, but um, we, we, we've certain everybody's dealing with whatever their whatever their you know traumas are, and and thankfully, all things considered, our traumas have been manageable. You know, mm-hmm. I think super grateful for that and and no question that's a credit to our family and to faith honestly to having a belief system that's bigger mm-hmm. than you mm-hmm. you know yep. it's not just like when this all happened like i said preach it so preach sorry it. no that's <laughs> that, that that is i i mean i've never heard that so well said i mean everything the three of y'all just said in these last few minutes that that is so well articulated and i've never thought about how again y'all have lived it but just how that would be to not have that uh sort of like ball pit, you know, where you can just sort of go crazy and everybody's <laughs> right, like, yeah, he's in a ball right. pit. They're going crazy. That's what you do in a ball pit. You go ham. But instead, you know, you're... I, man, ball pits are awesome, by the way. Best. I recently was in one again oh, with kids. Gosh. And also impossible greatest... to get out of uh, as a human. And as an impossible older to get out of and, and literally the most germ-infested yeah. place on oh, yeah, the yeah, planet. Yeah. No, that don't every, think yeah, about there's... what's gone in in ball pit. You oh. just don't want to know. But ball if y'all tried to like get out of one as an adult... You don't want to know why they exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's incredibly... It's like, no, you know, you I remember getting, it. like, we, we were at one of these trampoline parks with my kids, and they have one. And it was like, let's bounce it. Boom. Zana, my daughter, pop, she's out. You know, get in. Bam, bam, bam. And I get in, and I was like, Mur-r-r. I'm like yelling. Mur-r-r. They're like trying oh, to pull me. Boy. I have no yeah. body strength all of a sudden. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> you can't be dignified no, in a ball. No, no, no. no, no, no it's no, not no. possible. That's just, yeah, that's what, yeah. what you know. So, okay, so we have two questions we ask everybody, and, and, and uh, y'all can each answer these, one person, whatever, uh, you know, whatever you're feeling. So the first question is this. What is the one thing that you want your kids to know? Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, gosh. Light, easy, breezy question. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many ways Golly. we can go with this, guys. I mean, that's that's why we love to ask go, it, baby. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to decide whether to go, like, genuine how I, or I, genuine and how I okay. actually uh, want. Let, let, or, let me find the balance between genuine and funny. <laughs> Jesus loves the little children. <laughs> all the children of the world. Red and yellow, well, black, black and, and white, white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus the loves the little children, children of the world. world. They want I mean, them t- if, you, if you're talking about one thing, I mean, that, that is all about faith. I mean, we are here yeah. where we are, who we are, 
yeah. because of mm -hmm. what we believe, right? Growing up mm -hmm. Christian and, and seeing yourself in the world, not as the world, right? We are, we mm -hmm. are here for a reason. Like we, mm -hmm. we are here. Suffering is a real thing that will happen to all people and it has a benefit or it can become about you. Uh, mm -hmm. And so th those are the things I think we're all looking to teach mm -hmm. our kids because, because every gift you have, right? Every calling you have, everything you're, you're, you're born with, like you also die. Right, <laughs> you don't get to keep so it. far. Everyone and so, has. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> so yeah. far, everyone. Dave's got a cryogenic <laughs> lab. Yeah. He's yeah. Working I'm working on yeah. some things. He's, he's talking to Jesus. And, he's and, crying. And I think we all know, like, mu music is a great reflection of this too. It's it's wonderful by yourself, right? Hmm. But when you share it with someone, it's better, right? Hmm. And yeah. so the things that you give to people, I think, hmm. intuitively, are better. And as a dad, you learn that a thousand times a day, right? Mm. Wow, this was really good and really hard, but but now it's so much better because I'm I'm giving it to my kids. I'm sharing mm. it with my kids. I'm wow. teaching my kids. So mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Can you guys top that? I uh, you know I mean I, I wouldn't try <laughs> I don't think I could top I would say it. differently. Yeah, I mean you that that you're loved. Yep. You know mm, that yeah. you're loved. You know I do think as a dad, as you know, we all moms, dads everybody has different different sort of essential things that you're contributing to making sure people get get to adulthood mm -hmm. and have their own ability to then be an influence on the next um and so there's a million details you you know speak to but but just that sense of that truth which is really jumping off the same point if you the, the, if you know you're loved you can give love mm -hmm. you can you people that have never felt love truly like you are important. You're not an accident. You're not a, just a speck in the world. Like you're here for a reason. If you can give, if you can ingrain that strongly, everything else pales in comparison to how important that is to know that. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, you can't really know true love in, without without knowing sacrifice. Well, and also that you are <laughs> that you are loved, right? It's yeah. like so having God's love in your life and seeing feeling that yeah. as a dad, it's like you you are a protector. You are a provider. You are a, you know you are a uh, you know, a coach, you know, and all these things. But most importantly, you're trying to say, hey, by the way, mm. I'm in your corner no matter what. Mm. Yep. Do not ever think that you could, I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, you almost, it's hard to believe because you don't will never want to have the situation, but you know, like, even if your child murdered someone, like, you would be inclined mm. to be there for them. Like, you just have this ingrained, Look, like, he, what? He wasn't, he wasn't he murdering. He was like, a I'm, mur murder. I'm gonna kill <laughs> you. <laughs> Did you like, There's a theme here Zach's with the answers. Gonna... Zach's children, for instance, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was like, I love you. I, I'm there for you, yeah. you know. Yeah. We so, I mean, I think that, that truth of just... <laughs> That depth of connection that is, you know, you just, there you go, yeah. guys. Everything else, we'll work on it. Yeah. That one, that's, that's a constant. It. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I, I'm, I'm going to go. Wait, wait, wait. That wasn't it enough? <laughs> well, no, I wanted to say something that dad used to always say to us. I mean, I, I, one, one of the things I think it also relates to, it's the same thing, which is, but it's, it's from a slightly different perspective, too, which is, you know, I think when you have the perspective of, of the world being bigger than you, you can then remove yourself from some of some of some things and say look i i am here not to own things but to be a good steward of things hmm. right so don't grab it with your fist and hold on to it white knuckle it open handed it's a gift every day every moment it, it, it's a present <laughs> you know you know I, a monk once said to me i you know we have to live in eternity which is now hmm. Because, you know, it's not the past. Another, it's an, it's now. We yeah. have to stay here and deal with now. Mm. So, I, I think our dad used to always say, you know, remember that when you meet folks and when you and when you're doing this job, you know, this may be the only time that you meet this person or that person. So, do your best to remember that while you might be tired, uh, they don't know that, mm. and so try and give as much of yourself as you can in these moments mm. because it may be the only moment they ever have mm. and you ever have mm -hmm. with them. Mm. And so I think life is kind of like that too. It's just, it's just more on a one-on-one -on -one scale, mm. you know? And, and so hopefully you can give your kids enough strength, enough purpose, enough, enough confidence that they can look at each person and each day as a gift mm. And, and and treat it accordingly. Yeah. Man, that's good. Jeez, guys. 
All right. This is that was like three. This is the last question. <laughs> We're here. You okay. Um, what do you want your kids to say at your funeral? Mm. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'll go first because I'll probably die first. Oh, um, wow. Okay. For lots, for lots of reasons. Being killed by for Zach's lots kids. of reasons. I was just going to say that they should say he'll go first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, what would I? What would I hope that my kids would say at my funeral? Um, we had a lot of good laughs. Oh. Uh, together. Down? No, I've never thought about it. Actually, we had a lot of good laughs together. Uh, but my dad always cared about the things that were most important and that was his family. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Boom. Like so, a warm hug. So like if I summarize that like dad was a good man but he loved me the most. That's what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, actually no if, if I'm going with what effort will actually say my dad meant well, but God, he was long-winded. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he would lecture me all the time. And I remember, Zach, you remember we were talking in the car one time, and you go, and I go, well, I don't know what the kids will say about me. And you literally, you were like, no, your kids are just going to say, dad lectures me all the time. And literally, that's what Everett says all the time now. Dad, not another lecture. Oh. Uh, teen, so, teen, the teen years. So, uh. One time I was in the house and um, my wife, she just looked at me. She goes, could you stop singing everything? <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, am I constantly singing everything? And she goes, yes. When you're dead, your kids are going to go, remember how dad used to always just sing everything instead of talking? Like, give us an example. <laughs> They're like, can you wash the dishes now? I mean, now, like literally right this moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's hooky. So I think that's what they're going to say. Do you remember how dad would always just sing everything? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. There's Mom so, does that, which it's is funny. So that's hard not to, what I want them to say. Yeah, but you think that is what they're going to say. Yeah, but that's what they're going yeah, to yeah. say. <laughs> um, it, it's imp impossible to, to answer this, uh, you know, to find the balance between funny and sincere. But I, yeah. fun funnily, I was going to say, I, I hope it's more singing than talking, honestly. <laughs> I'm joking. I, that's what I was thinking. Was that... Um, I, I've always, I've never, I've never feared the idea of death, but I've always had a frustrating relationship with it because I think about this, you know, the, it always, the, the sense of, you know, when you lose somebody, I don't know if you guys experienced this, it really feels, if you know somebody really well, it's so strange when someone passes because it doesn't feel impossible that they can yeah. be gone, you know? And I would yeah. say on the other side, when you have a child, it's really strange to me when I met every one of my kids, I thought, wow, how did you not exist already? Yeah, yeah. And like, mm -hmm. you, they just feel like they've like, wait, you're you're here, but now I can't imagine you weren't yeah. here. So I, yeah. I just hope that I want you. You want that moment to be the, you want it to be a continuation. I, I don't want I, it. I don't want it to be a. All right, here's everything we got to say about dad. I want it to be a man. Thank you, and I'm wow. This is this. I want it to be a celebration. Mm -hmm. You know, I want you want it to be wow. Here we go. You know, let's go. Let's eat. You know. <laughs> So yeah. and 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 so that end of life thing, it's like no, it shouldn't be the end. I want it to be. I hope it's a celebration of life. You yeah. know. So I'm gonna say one more thing. Uh, it makes me think we, you know, everybody deals with things, but I think one thing, everyone culturally, I I wish people understood more is that death is a gift, hmm. right? And watching your parents grow old and die is a gift, hmm. right? Uh, we have this tendency to to want to whitewash things and only only. I mean, you're talking about living life and it, it being a launching point for good life, right? But people have a tendency to just go like, okay, we're going to put the body in an urn so we don't have to look at it. We're going to have to, you know, we're going to, I don't want to think about the fact that you're dead. The beauty of dying is that we remember that we are only here for a limited time. Mm -hmm. And it gives everyone this opportunity to see the thing they love most and are most grounded in, their mother, their father, right? And go, Wow. If the thing that brought me into the world is leaving the world, what does that mean about what I think about the world and where mm. I am going in the world? And so, um, you know, that that is just this amazing thing. It's it's a it's not it's a sad thing, but sad things, just like hard things, are, are usually really valuable Jeez. and required to live a good life. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, that's 
Jeez. Yeah. Don't fear it, but respect it. Don't the whiplash it. Yeah. I get well, from Zach's comments is just insane. Yeah. It's like, rink, <laughs> rink, rink, rink. And He's... now don't forget the way that <laughs> Reel you in. Woo! <laughs> that is amazing. Well, let, so, me, let, me, let me say yeah. a couple things before we dismiss y'all. And, and I was thinking about this as, as you guys, as we were just hanging this whole time. I think two things. One, you guys make great music. Mm -hmm. You really do. I think, I think one of the oh, things that John and I have talked about much. before we're thinking about this is you guys have really done what feels like the impossible is start coming into this career smoking hot. And I feel like y'all maintained your miles per hour on quality of output, which I think is, I don't know a better compliment I can give a band. I mean, it really is. I think that is Thanks. so, so amazing. So you, you guys do in, make you. incredible music and you do such a good job engaging fans and you really are such a model for how to do this over a long period of time that's one i think two the thing that's even more powerful to me is sitting here watching how much you love each other and i think about yeah music is a legacy but i also think to sit here 30 years in because y'all aren't just friends that are in a band because that's one dynamic but you're your family that's in a band and so i think it's such a gift uh for us to get to see that and i think for people that listen to your music but also your friends and family to see that I think just as much as your music is a legacy, that y'all's relationship and commitment to each other is just as potent. So, I you know, agree. I feel huge, uh, one of my favorite things inspired. about this conversation has been watching like the subtle little like you know touching the shoulder and all that. Like you can just feel <laughs> you you ribbing each you other. Say you can't you see the shiv in his other, other arm. <clears throat> Yeah, like yeah. the love between <laughs> Taylor the three Taylor of you. wincing every time Zach is about to speak. He's <laughs> giving you whiplash. No, it's goofy, goofy, yeah. goofy, goofy. Serious. You, you guys, well, you're very, very, very kind. A great, great conversation, and love what both of you guys do and create. And and honestly, yeah. I think, yeah, we one one thing you hopefully feel from us is we feel grateful. I mean, I know I feel mm. incredibly grateful. Absolutely. So the gratitude spills out on yeah. the rest of it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah. hey, we just. Um, and yes, we we might be shiving each other. I was gonna time. say. I, yeah, I, was, I was I was gonna say <laughs> a we love of each blood other, but just but <laughs> just like all relationships, there's a lot uh, there's a lot of difficult sure. times yeah. over the yeah. years too. Yeah. Yes. and you got to learn how to kind of not punch each other too <laughs> Come much. Come to the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Good well, I think, I think y'all are an inspiration that way. Though. Really, you truly are. I mean, the you, you know, can be together. Truly are. But thank y'all so much yes. for your time. It's been so fun. This has been great. Dead fish.